We love clothes. We love clothes so much that we create 2,000 tons of textile waste per day just here in Malaysia. That's the weight of 1,860 proton sagas per day in textile waste. It also makes up 5% of our landfills. To help solve this issue, textile donation bins have been popping up around the Klang Valley in the past few years. And one of the main players behind these bins is cloth cares. If you go to any, any government offices, what do you realise? The recycling bins, right? So what do you have there? You have the metal, you have the plastics, right? But you don't have the fabrics. Fabrics in Malaysia are not really recycled. People dispose that inside the garbage bin or they give donations. But by the end of the day, no one person can tell us that, hey, it does not go into the landfills. The cloth cast movement started because Susie and her co-founder, Sarah, couldn't find an answer to the simple question, what happens to the clothes Malaysians throw away? So, we have clothes we don't want anymore. What do we do with them? If you don't like your white in colour shirt, you can dye. You can change it first at home, right? So this is the DIY. And if you really like, this really doesn't bring joy anymore at all. What you can do is, you can visit www.cloth.com.my or you can visit our Instagram at Cloth Lifestyle or Facebook and you can find out our list of publicly accessible locations. You can just drop it off. It's simple. Wash your unwanted garments and leave them in a donation bin near your home or your office. But that's not always how the story goes. Sometimes they also put other than textile. For example, they put the electrical waste into our recycle bins. And sometimes for the area that uh, not so good in terms of uh, education and poor of economic status, they also put their kitchen waste with all the vegetables, all the food waste into our recycle bins. Lifeline is a textile recycling factory in Port Klang. It works with cloth cast, taking in whatever donations end up in the bins. They sort through 80 tons of used clothes per day, most of them baju kurung and tudung. They only process clean garments. Textiles that are stained by chemicals or food waste are sent to another partner, who turns it into refuse-derived fuel. The e-waste is also sent for recycling, while the rest is sold to help generate income to keep the factory running. The rest of the load is enough to keep everyone at the factory busy. In this factory, we separate the textile into 360 categories. For example, uh, if the clothes for men's clothes, we have long sleeve, short sleeve, we have pocket, we have men polo shirt, we have dress, we have short sleeve, we have casual, we have formal, we have jersey, that's only for men's. And for the pants, we have short pants, long pants, six, six pocket pants, cargo pants, army pants, slack, uh, jeans, uh, track shoot, and lot of quantity. So in total, we have 360 type of garment in here, we process. So generally, where do they end up? Basically, depend on the categories. If the clothes are still wearable, which means we can give people to wear the clothes, we will send to third world country, Mombasa, Kenya, Papua New Guinea, Uganda, and also to the charity organization in Malaysia such as Magna. There are three categories of cloth. Those which are not wearable but of water-absorbent material are turned into industrial wiping cloth, bound for Western countries like Australia. If they're not water absorbent, they end up as biofuel. Clothes that are still wearable are sold to Africa. Africa is where most of the world's second-hand clothes end up. It's an open secret. Clothes are shipped in by the container load and sold to locals for dirt cheap. What doesn't sell is discarded in landfills. That nice jacket you can't fit in anymore could end up in a trash pile in Kenya. But why are they selling our donated clothes to other countries? Because uh, in here, we are a business organization, which means we still need to take care of the profit and revenue. Plus, we have 350 workers to be paid their salary for. Right. But sometimes people say, oh, you take the cloth for free and you sell it. Uh, it's uh, more than that, actually. It's, the process is very complex. Be behind the beans is a very huge uh, process here. So, in here, we will see this like, oh, I don't want this. Like, but if this type of item going to the right place at the right condition and right people, it will be high demand and value for them. So please don't throw your <laughs> underwear. Underwear is a high demand item in Africa. When we questioned the hygiene of the items, Zaki assured us, based on their experience, most of the items arrive at the factory clean. Another interesting high demand item we spotted were short skirts or so labelled sexy skirt at the factory. 
most of them are destined for the Philippines. Despite the ethical dilemma of selling donated clothes to third world countries, giving our clothes to charity homes doesn't seem to be the answer either. For Malaysia, they only expect the used clothes only end up at the charity home. So when they give a huge pile of clothes to a charity home, it will end up there. So it's uh, not a very transparent story. Actually, for the charity home, they only can process about 50% of the clothes being donated. So basically, the balance 30% will be thrown to the landfill. At the end of the day, this mess we're in with our clothes all comes back to our consumption habits and our attitude. The problem that we have here is basically people like me. Likes the volume, big supporters of fast fashion. So how do you recycle that? Number one, it's about how you keep it at home inside your wardrobe. After you wash, what you're going to do with it? You dry it and you you iron it and then you hang it nicely. Because by the end of the day, wardrobe is about mindset. According to the 2015 documentary, The True Cost, across the globe, we buy 400% more clothes today than we did 20 years ago, largely because of how cheap fashion has become. The spring, summer, autumn and winter fashion seasons no longer exist. It has been replaced by new styles that pop up every other day. Clothes that are made of thin material but look so great in the store's lighting that we buy it without a second thought. But maybe it's time we had a second thought. Or a third. <laughs>